What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today got another Tom Petty album reaction. This time we got Wildflowers up by our friend, longtime patron and supporter of the channel, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Always appreciate you. Did Full Moon Fever for Mark a few months back, so check that out after this one. I'm a big Petty fan, but I've never listened to this album. I know a few of the songs, and I don't know why. Just, it's never happened, so looking forward to it. Uh, let's check out a little bit of research on it, and then we're going to get after it. It was his second solo album, released on November 1st, 1994, going triple platinum. In 2020, the new updated list for Rolling Stone, they put it at number 214 on the 500 greatest albums of all time. It was the first release by Tom after signing a contract with Warner Brothers, where he had already recorded with the Traveling Wilburys, and the first of three albums produced by the great Rick Rubin. Features all the members of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, with the exception of drummer Stan Lynch. Steve Ferrone plays drums on Wildflowers. He later joined officially the following year, joined uh, the Heartbreakers. However, the album was not credited to the Heartbreakers because in Petty's words, Rick, talking about Rubin, and I both wanted more freedom than to be strapped into five guys. Freedom notwithstanding, Petty chose to use most of his regular band as session players, demonstrating his comfort with the format. Rolling Stone placed Wildflowers at number 12 on their list of the best albums of the 1990s. Very critically acclaimed, Enemy 8 out of 10, Pitchfork 8.8 .8 out of 10, All Music 4.5 out of 5 stars, Rolling Stones 4 out of 5 stars. There is another version of this uh, called Wildflowers and all the rest. Petty's original listing for this was a double album with 25 songs. And I'll tell you, this has 15 songs over an hour long. It's already long. I can't imagine that. But Lenny Warnaker of Warner Brothers suggested it was too long. Petty's family and bandmates arranged the 2020 re-release of the album that includes these deleted songs, demos, and live tracks entitled Wildflowers and all the rest. The super deluxe edition of the box set called Finding Wildflowers included a fifth disc of the alternate versions of the Wildflowers tracks. In April 2021, Finding Wildflowers was released individually. All tracks, as always, written by Petty, unless I note. Otherwise, let's get after this. And we're going to start off with the title track you see it below, Wildflowers. It was not released as a single, but it did chart at number 16 on the Billboard Hot Rock songs. Tom described writing this song. He said, I just took a deep breath and it came out. The whole song, stream of consciousness, words, music, chords, finished it. I mean, I just played it into a tape recorder and I played the whole song and I never played it again. I actually only spent three and a half minutes on that whole song. So I'd come back for days playing that tape, thinking there must be something wrong here because it just came too easy. And then I realized there's probably nothing wrong at all. That's a great story, man. Well, there you have it, Wildflowers. I tell you what, I've never heard this song. Just a fantastic song to start the album off with. Uh, what it's about, who knows? You know, he says a stream of consciousness. The first part, you belong among the wildflowers. You belong in a boat at sea. Sail away, kill off the hours. You belong somewhere you feel free. That starts out with the chorus, and there's only two verses. And, you know, is he talking to somebody he cares about? Someone, maybe he's a former lover, but she's not happy with him. Or at the end, some people think he's talking about, uh, you know, someone who's died and they've gone away to a better place. But who really knows? And he probably doesn't really know since it was just a stream of conscience. But I'll tell you what I found interesting on this track. There's a lot of instrumentation on here. While it sounds simple at first, there's a lot of layering going on because you got Mike Campbell's over on the bass on this one. You got Ben Mont on the piano and the harmonium. Uh, you've also got Mike Campbell on the harpsichord. And then Steve Ferrone's on the drums, but Ringo Starr is also on this track. So there's a lot of stuff going on there, but great way to start. And now we're going to go to a track I definitely know of here. The lead single, You Don't Know How It Feels. Reached number one on the U.S. Billboard Album Rock Tracks charts. Three on the Canadian charts. 13 on the Billboard Hot 100, becoming Tom's last top 40 hit in the U.S. MTV, VH1, and many radio stations aired a censored version of this song, taking the word roll out of let's roll another joint, as well as a version that played the word joint backwards. A version replacing the word roll with hit was also made. They were really worried about this back in the day. The music video won the video for the best, uh, for MTV Best Male Video of 1995. You don't know how it feels. This song is a classic you know, I know a lot of people on albums like Deep Cuts, and I get that. There's some Deep Cuts I like, and they'll kind of shy away from the hits. This song was a hit, and this song is a classic because it's absolutely fantastic. Down from Tom's delivery, because it's 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 Tom, right? But it's very cool and calculated and just kind of matter-of-fact, which lends to the lyrics of the song. Many people think it's about his divorce that would happen two years later, but usually those things are kind of a slow roll, and you know it's it's going. No, no uh, pun intended with the roll, but... He said, let me run with you tonight. I'll take you on a moonlight ride. There's someone I used to see, but she don't give a damn for me. 
But let me get to the point. Let's roll another joint, turn the radio loud. I'm too alone to be proud. You don't know how it feels. You don't know how it feels to be me. And if it really is autobiographical to an extent, of course you don't know what it feels like to be one of the biggest rock stars in the world. People come, people go. Some people grow young, some grow cold. I woke up in between a memory and a dream. Some great stuff here. And then the chorus again. Finish that with another verse in the chorus. Once again, it's probably going to be a theme with this album, but you got a lot of stuff going on instrumentally. I mentioned the harmonica in there. Tom plays the harmonica on this. He's going to play the harmonica on one more song. We'll get through it. Tom also plays the bass on this, the electric, the acoustic. Mike Campbell's on the electric. Ben Mont is on the grand piano and the electric piano. Um, so, you know, and Steve's on the on the drumming. So uh, you're, you're going to have a lot of stuff going on on this album um, just with fantastic instrumentation. So really enjoyed that one. I knew I would. Now it's going to go to time to move on. It's his seventh most streamed solo song on Spotify. I just found that interesting because it was never released as a single. Time to move on. What a good tune there. Kind of the opposite of what I said on the last song, right? Tom's calm delivery on the last. This one's much faster paced. The music really, uh, the instrumentation really pushes it along and really enjoyed that. And it, it kind of fits with the lyrics, right? Time to move on. It's kind of a little bit of a more rapid pace. It's talking about the end of a relationship, right? He's wasted too much time on it. It's time to move on. He starts once again with the chorus. It's time to move on. Time to get going. What well, lies ahead, I have no way of knowing, but under my feet, baby, grass is growing. It's time to move on. It's time to get going. Um, it's just been... Uh, been too much uh, too much time man, in a bad relationship. Verse 3, I like sometime later getting the words wrong, wasting the meaning and losing the rhyme, nauseous adrenaline, like breaking up a dog fight, like a deer in the headlights, frozen in real time. I'm losing my mind. It's time to get move on, time to get going. My camel pr- plays a great slide guitar on this one. One of the highlights instrumentally for me. Now I'll move on to the four track, You Wreck Me. Tom wrote this with Mike Campbell, of course, his longtime collaborator and, and guitarist. Second single, it didn't chart on the Billboard Hot 100, but it peaked at number two on the mainstream rock chart. The music for this song was written by Mike. Uh, Petty wrote some words to the song, called it You Rock Me. Mike thought the title was a little ordinary and very cliche, but the song sounded fine and they recorded it. Eventually, Petty came back and decided to change the title to You Wreck Me, and the new title changed the whole meaning of the song. You Wreck Me. Lyrically, basically, I think just about maybe this girl's good for him, maybe she's not, uh, but he, he can't help but be around her. You know, the chorus is, oh yeah, you wreck me, baby. Yeah, you break me in two, but you move me, honey. Yes, you do. So you're not good for me, but man... Do I want to be with you? But Campbell's guitar work on here is fantastic. But just the whole tone of the song and sound of the of the song. This could go back, like we did the debut album and then Damn the Torpedoes way back, you know, in the mid and then late 70s. Those, those reviews are up on the channel. Check them out after this if you want. Um, but this song sounds like it could have been on there. Like I think probably because Campbell did the, the music on it. I, it just sounds like it's early heartbreakers right or even fit in some of their early 80s stuff so i like that about a little throwback it's all the way in 1994 we're gonna we're gonna throw back that sound so just sounded great now we're on to it's good to be king third single charted at 68 on the billboard hot 106 on the billboard mainstream rock chart on all music uh, reviewer matthew greenwald wrote that the song quote is the most self-effacing of personal songs to reach the top 10 charts in the 90s it's Good to Be King deals with the phenomenon of rock and roll stardom. He describes the song's melody as elegant and folk rockish and absolute, and also supported by a Michael Kamen string arrangement that he described as absolutely stunning. Yeah, Kamen's on a few of these songs, I think four or five of them. So, I mean, we had everybody in here. Let's check it out. It's Good to Be King. Obviously, a different feel. This song I mentioned at the start, I don't, I don't know how to, to describe it. Almost a surreal or an ominous feeling to the song, which Kamen's string arrangements bring in, and then Ben Mont on, on the keys and just... There's a great guitar in the middle of it, but then it kind of dials back to this ominous thing. And I, I think I can almost hear Tom delivering this almost with a smirk on his face. Like, yeah, it, it's good to be king. It just for a while to be there in velvet. Yeah, to give him a smile. It's good to be get high and never come down. It's good to be king of your own little town. Yeah, the world would swing. Oh, if I were king. Can I help it if I still dream time to time? Verse three, it's good to be king and have your own world. It helps to make friends. It's good to meet girls, a sweet little queen who can't run away. It's good to be king, whatever it pays. Excuse me if I have some place in my mind where I go time to time because this craziness is too hard. Then it trails off for a minute plus just into that almost mood swinging, ominous music, man. So really enjoyed that one. Obviously different. So we're a third of the way through the album, but now 
these last 10 songs, I couldn't find any research on any of them. Nothing out there. I'm sure there's stuff out there. I couldn't find it, but with Tom's writing, we can figure it out. We got Only a Broken Heart. Only a Broken Heart. Very Beatlesque in a few parts on there. Very interesting, too. It has no electric guitar. You never find that with Petty and the Heartbreakers. Uh, kind of self-explanatory, Only a Broken Heart. Here comes that feeling I've seen in your eyes back in the old days before the hard times. But I'm not afraid anymore. It's only a broken heart. And he just kind of delves that out through the verses. Of course, what would I give to start all over again to clean up my mistakes? Stand in the moonlight, stand under heaven. This verse 3, wait for an answer, hold out forever. But don't be afraid. It's only a broken heart. I know your weakness. You've seen my dark side. The end of the rainbow is always a long ride. But don't be afraid anymore. It's only a broken heart. It's only a broken heart. A very understated song in, in a really good way. Now we're going to move on to the seventh track. We got Honeybee. I see that the great Carl Wilson sings some backing vocals on this one. Honeybee starts out with a little spoken intro. More of a jam session type of song. You know, the instrumentation on here is the star. The guitar work is a star. The lyrics themselves, you know, not a lot to him. I mean, basically, I think he's hooking up with this girl, telling her, don't tell your parents, don't tell your boyfriend, you know, but there's something about her. There's that physical attraction there but uh i enjoyed it for what it is it's not going to be one of my favorites but it is cool to see this side of him and i'm glad that uh, they put a jam track on there might be some more in the future for me here on this album as we're not even quite halfway done with it but uh i did enjoy it like i said for what it was great musicianship as you would expect and we'll move on to the eighth track don't fade on me don't fade on me this one was also co-written by mike campbell and i've said it during the during the song, great acoustic work by Tom, but then I noticed also it's dueling acoustics. So Mike is on it, because I'm like, why is Mike not on this song since he co-wrote it? But he's on her, and that's it, man. Just some dueling acoustics. So we go from the jam session of the previous song, Honeybee, and it is Tom singing this song uh, with dueling acoustics, and, and that's it. So I remember feeling this way, you can lose it without knowing. You wake up and you don't notice which way the wind is blowing, so don't fade, no, don't fade on me. You were the one who made things different. You were the one who took me in. You were the one I could count on. Above all, you were my friend, so don't fade on me. So, you know, the broken relationship undertones run through this entire record. And I mean, when you're a master songwriter and musician, what better way to get out your heartache and your despair? It's cathartic, I'm sure. But uh, enjoy that one. Now we go to Hard On Me. Hard On Me, I know it's repetitive, but the guitar work on here is fantastic. Uh, John Pierce comes in and plays the bass on here. The only track that he is credited on on here common theme this person's making it hard on him it's all i can do to keep that little girl smiling and keep my faith alive takes all i got to hold on to tomorrow and you want to make it hard yeah you want to make it hard on me some other time i'd be understanding you're supposed to be the friend that i needed when i was down and now maybe if i tried i could turn the other cheek maybe not maybe but how big do i have to be i needed someone to put their arm around me shelter me from all harm just as i find something to believe in so that is the only lyrics on here i read them all to you because it's a very uh slow paced song a lot of instrumentation in there that dives in and out uh enjoyed it man set a nice little mood to it once again kind of slower deliberate lyrics letting you take in what tom's saying and kind of the feeling you can feel the hurt in him so that was really well done now we go on to Cabin Down Below. Cabin Down Below. I'm going to guess he's up on this yacht. I don't know. He wants to go with the girl to the Cabin Down Below. It's just a hookup song. It's just one of those fun songs you throw in here. Uh, everybody's having a good time. You can tell. There's some backing on there at the start. You know, a little deeper uh, first verse, deeper sounding vocally. Um, I like Ben Mont's piano on there. Nice, nice little piano on there. You know, just like I said, just a fun song to come in with to uh, mark the two-thirds of the way through the album. Now, move on to To Find a Friend. To Find a Friend, you got the great Ringo Starr back on this one, playing the drums solo on this one. Steve Ferrone is not in here. Enjoy this one a lot. Enjoy the atmosphere and the arrangement of it. I thought Ben Mott came in great. Tack piano and a Xenon. I don't even know what that is. Don't even know if I'm saying that right, but Ben Mott's on that. And Petty plays such a great uh, acoustic. I don't think he gets enough credit for that because everybody focuses on the electric. But uh, that, that was really nice. And uh, Campbell's also on a choral sitar on this too. So it, it has this unique sound to it, even though it's a chilled song. It reminds me of some of the first songs on the album where we got a bunch of instrumentation layering together in a subtle way that just creates a unique sound. And 
It's about a midlife crisis, right? In the middle of his life, he left his wife and ran off to be bad. Boy, it was sad. But he bought a new car, found a new bar, and went under another name, created a whole new game. And the days went by like paper in the wind. Everything's changed, then changed again. It's hard to find a friend. David Bazan of Pedro the Lion, who have a bunch of their uh, their stuff up on the channel, said that he named their first album after that chorus on here. It's hard to find a friend. Meanwhile, then, his wife's boyfriend moved in. So I'm going to assume this isn't his first wife because he left his first wife. He never tells us exactly that he's got another wife, but he's got a new wife, I think. Uh, her boyfriend moved in and took over the house. Everybody was quiet as a mouse, and it changed their lives, changed their plans. Slowly, they grew apart. Boy, it would have broke your heart. I would say so, Tom. And then he finishes with that chorus three times. Really, really strong song. Now we'll go to the song, A Higher Place. A Higher Place. I think Tom and his boys are on the run, right? They got to find a higher place. We got to get to a higher place. And we got to leave by night before that river takes us down. We got to find somewhere that's dry. We got to run like we've never run or we're going to lose the light. Um, well, I fool myself and I don't know. I thought we could ride this out. I was up all night making up my mind, but now I've got my doubts. I've got my eye on the water line trying to keep my sense of humor. We got to get to a higher place. No, it's about to come down. So he uses the water and higher place, you know, higher ground. We got to get away from all this. Uh, he talks about kissing the girl. When I add up what I've left behind, I don't want to lose no more. And once again, I have to emphasize, you know, the diverse instrumentation that goes up to just give this song that arrangement, just that atmosphere. You got Tom on the harmonica. You also got Tom on the bass on this one. Uh, you've got Mike on the bass as well on this and the electric. Ben Mott's playing the piano, the Hammond organ, which he's thrown in here a few times, and an orchestron. Once again, I don't know what that is, but you know, Ben Mott does. Um, Lenny Castro's jumping in here. He has on several songs, added some extra percussion. So it just adds to this, this layering and just richness to the song. Now we'll go to House in the Woods. We got three tracks left. House in the Woods basically just going off and says that no one lives within nine or 10 miles. When he's out here with this girl, all I can do is trust her that, uh, you know, she's going to be his love of his life, I think, you know, and they're just kind of out away from everybody. If we can only live that way, right? We, our relationships would probably be a lot less complicated and and last a lot longer. One of those songs, again, where there's a lot of stuff going on. You got Tom on the electric and Mike on the electric. You got Mike on the bass, Ben Mont on that piano, but you have a nice steel guitar by Marty Rifkin, which adds a different ambiance to this song, right? This song sounds different as well. And you got a horn section of four guys on here, including Jim Horn, Brandon Fields, uh, Greg Herbert, and Kim Hutchcroft all on the sax on here, four-way uh, mixing of that. So that's why this song has a different feel than any of the others. And that's what's made this album really nice is the diversity of tracks. We still got two left. I can guess the content of this one, Crawling Back to You. And that song was so good, man. Petty sounds great. He's doing his own harmony vocals on this one. He did it on a couple of the other tracks. And he's actually playing organ on this as well. Ben Mott comes in on the Hammond and also on the Mellotron at the start there. I'm like, oh, we're going to have Strawberry Fields on here. Just a little uh, little throw out there to the Beatles. The song itself, just the ooh, you heard me sing along with it once I came in too early. Sorry about that. I keep crawling back to you. Waiting by the side of the road for a day to break so we could go down into Los Angeles with dirty hands and worn out knees. Oh, I keep crawling back to you. Uh, one of the things I really like, the last verse, um, I'm so tired of being tired. Sure as night will follow day. Most things I worry about never happen anyway. You know, studies tell you 98% of the stuff you worry about never happens anyway, but it's one of those things. And it's that twice in that course, I keep crawling back to you. The song is uh, over five minutes long, but it doesn't feel like it does. This one's going to go down as one of my faves. And here we are. We made it. 15 tracks. Last track, Wake Up Time. Wake Up Time. Nice string arrangement with Michael Kamen. As I mentioned when it started, Tom is playing the piano on here. You got Mike on the bass. There's no electric guitar. A very understated song musically, which fit just perfect. I mean, what a great way to end a 15-track album. He's talking about a broken man here. You, know, you, you follow your feelings. You follow your dreams. You follow the leader into the trees. And what's in there waiting, neither one of us knows. You got to keep one eye open the further you go. You never dreamed you'd go down on one knee, but now who could have seen you'd be so hard to please somehow? You feel like a poor boy a long way from home. You're just a poor boy a long way from home. And he gets to what I guess I would call the chorus, since that's what the song is named, uh, 
wake up time, but he speaks it right almost in a reassuring way. Like, Hey man, snap out of this. It's going to be all right. And it's wake up time, time to open your eyes and rise and shine. So I think like this guy's an older guy looking back on his life. You spend your life dreaming, running around in a trance, you hang out forever and still miss the dance. Like he didn't really get uh, what he wanted out of life, but it's okay. And you were so cool back in high school. What happened? You were so sure not to have your spirits down, right? That time when you're young in high school and and the world is your oyster, so to speak. You can get and do whatever you want. And then as you get into life, sometimes life well, takes you down different paths that you never thought you would see and throws you trials that you never thought you'd be in. And you don't necessarily end up where you thought you would. But a lot of times that's better off. But I mean, I'm a Christian. I believe God has a plan for all of us. And it's not usually what our plan is. And I've lived that out in my own life, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. But uh, just a great way to end this album. That's going to segue me perfectly into my favorite tracks. You know, there's 15 songs on here. It's not a song in here I didn't like. Uh, a couple of the songs you could probably cut if you wanted us to get a little shorter on the album. 15 tracks, 60, almost 63 minutes is a big album. That's kind of the way we did it back in the 90s, right? Uh, thank you, Grunge, for popping that thing up over an hour. Britpop, everything's up over an hour. So uh, my honorable mention, I have several of them. The song we just listened to, Wake Up Time. Uh, also, to find a friend, It's Good to Be King, You Wreck Me, and time to move on. My faves, Wildflowers. You don't know how it feels. Knew that song really well, but it, it's uh, it's great for a reason. And then Crawling Back to You. So eight of the 15 I have either as honorable mentions or faves. But I mean, like I said, it's a really great album. The instrumentation on here, musicianship, you won't find any better from Tom to Mike Campbell to Ben Mott, Steve Ferrone on the drums and everybody else that, that joins in from time to time, but really, really enjoyed that. Now I get to my overall grade of the album. You know, this album and Full Moon Fever are different, yet they're the same quality-wise, which is top-notch. On first listen to this album, I'm gonna be at an 8.5. Appreciate you bringing this, Mark. Appreciate everyone who joined me on this journey. If you'd like to support us in any way, like Mark does, check out the Patreon link below or on the end screen that is about to hit. The patrons make all of this possible. Appreciate it, guys. Until next time, I will see ya.